Crypto and Case BS Science teachers. This is for my October 6th PD. I'm recording this just in case any of you couldn't make it. I know Paseo probably won't make it, so Paseo I'll be talking to you mainly. Uh, but if anybody else just couldn't make that, um, this is a shorter recording than the live session. I think you'll find this more useful. Uh, I might be referring mainly to Paseo um, just as my reference guide. So I hope you guys are doing really well. And uh, anyone else who's joining us, welcome, welcome. All right, I want to jump into our slides real quick. Now, this first slide um, won't be fully complete, but if you're in grade seven or up, um, I'm going to have one of our Canvas coaches um, introduce themselves and kind of share who the coaches are in the district and what schools. Hopefully, you already know who yours is, but I would love for you to scan this QR code. Uh, just use your phone, fill out a brief survey. If you need to pause the video, perfect. All that's going to do is help them gather some information about where different people are at and what schools need the most focus and um, what specific needs people have. Because right now everybody's at like varying different levels of Canvas use. Um, and so this is just going to give them an easier way to um, pinpoint exactly where the help needs the most. This isn't our PD today. We're not going over Canvas, but I want to give a little bit of time for that. So pause, scan that. And now I'm going to jump into my thing. If you are meeting as a department to watch this, which hopefully you are, um, you might have been left out or you had something going on, um, you can skip this, skip ahead. Um, but if you are in a department, go ahead and pause, kind of do this as a good intro, kind of icebreaker. You guys already know each other, but just kind of get conversations going. And I'm going to go ahead and move forward because so you guys can pause the videos. So here we go. All right, what I'm talking about today is KCPS Science 2026. Um, setting a new goal, a new vision, um, and a new game plan for what it is that we wanna reach in three years time. So really exciting stuff, been working really hard in the background on all of this. I'm excited to share it with all of you guys. Um, I hope you're ready. Real quick, and um, if you're like Paseo, meeting as a department um, or wherever you're at, if you've got a team with you, feel free to pause um, at the right moment, but here I've got um, two bits of data. If you're in middle school, you'll be looking at the eighth grade data. If you're in high school, look at the biology. Uh, but this was our results from last year in comparison with the state. So blue is our district numbers, orange is the state. And I'm not presenting this in any way to bash anybody or say anything. This is just our baseline data where we were at. And I just want you guys to talk with the team briefly about what you notice and where improvements could be made. If you're watching as a group, go ahead and pause, um, take a few minutes. What do you guys notice? Well, I'll talk a little bit about where I think um, some areas could be improved upon in the next slide. But first, I just want to introduce, here's my goal. KCPS, KCPS Science will beat the state average at the end of the 2025-2026 school, school year. What that means is that over the course of the next three years, we're going to make improvements on our test scores. Um, and by that third time that we test, 2026, I'm looking that we beat the state average um, that year. So as you guys were looking at that data, hopefully you guys paused, took some time to look at it. You saw something similar to what I did. Okay, we have to reduce our below basic numbers. Basic isn't good, but below basic is like, oh, that is really not good kind of failing them. So we really want to reduce that number. But if we just focus on one end of this graph, we tend to forget the students at the other end who we could be pushing up. So while yes, I want to reduce the number of below basics, I also want to increase our mastery numbers, mastery being proficient and advanced. So that's kind of our where we're focused at as a district. How are we going to reduce those below basics? How are we going to increase those proficient and advanced? Some of our schools, let's say Lincoln High School, of course, they don't have as much below basic. So they're really looking at, okay, how do we move more students into those advanced numbers? A lot of our schools have a significant uh, below basic. So maybe that's the first focus for first year. Um, how do we really get a handle on what's going on there? And that's what today is all about. Taking a look at the data, seeing what it says, and then moving forward with the game plan for how are we going to get better results? So let's dive into that game plan. Um, let me pause. I think I forgot to mention um, if your department chair could pass out. I have a note catcher. Um, 
go ahead and pass that out if you haven't already. That way, throughout this presentation, you can jot down notes. And so when I turn it over to group discussions, you have a good reference sheet. That should be um, attached in the email that I sent this video link to. Perfect. All right, so how are we going to get there? Number one, as you guys know, I updated the curriculum from last year. Last year was my first year in the role. I kind of just kind of got a feel for everything. Where was everybody at? And I upgraded the curriculum. Um, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, it already looks great. We have a good resource, new curriculum, and I'm going to plan to make updates to that in the future, making it even better. Grades nine through 12, it's still lacking a little bit, and that's not because of the new curriculum map. It's because of our resource. Our resource just wasn't where it needs to be. So hopefully you guys have already seen we started the RFP process where I sent out a survey, got your guys' data and feedback, and that's going to be used with the uh, Academic Advisement Committee to start the process for initiating a request for proposal, which goes out to all the companies. They bid on it, and then we get um, a new resource. It's a long process. I don't get to control all of it, but I certainly am trying to move it forward. I'm really excited about that because then we can move into a resource in high school that is going to hit the students at the right rigor level, right support, and all those sorts of things. So really excited for that. Um, if we get the process moving in the correct amount of time, I want to actually open it up at the tail end of this year, um, school year, so in the spring, and have a few teachers pilot it out so that way we can kind of work out all the technical kinks and things like that. Um, and then trainings over the summer, and then I really want it full-blown used next year with brand new curriculum that supports it. So really looking forward to that. Increased support. So I was um, going around every school, helping out, doing a lot of things, but now with a year under my belt, getting a lay of the land across the whole district, um, I'm better equipped to support you in supplies, instructions, feedback, collaborations, and data breakdown. So I'm going to be a much bigger resource for all of you, and that's only going to increase every year um, I'm in this role because I continue to learn. And then we're going to start implementing leading measures. Um, it's good to have data like the one I just shared, the baseline data. It's good to have the quarter data when those come out. But those are called lag measures. Those are already done and over. And so you can't go back most of the time and make changes. So what are we going to start implementing into our classrooms, into our culture that we're measuring daily or weekly our students' progress towards our goals? Um, let's say you have an attendance goal. You can track students' attendance on each day, and if they've met their goal, you can show those dates, you're predicting better results afterwards. Those are lead measures, and so that's one thing that we can do to start to track our progress upwards and not wait for the test, cross your fingers type of thing. We're kind of working at this, reaching this goal of beating the state um, at two different levels. We have the district level, that's mainly me, although there's a few other resources here at the district level, but we improve the curriculum, we provide new resources, training support, and we provide big picture data analysis. That's the, all the data I've brought, I've distributed out to the teams. Um, and so that's some of the stuff that we provide at the district level. And at the school level, that's where the actual, or you guys, that's where the actual learning takes place and the collaboration, quality instruction. You have your school-based goals and you're tracking your data right on a regular basis. Those aren't independent of each other. Mine is a support for you guys and you guys provide feedback to me of how that's going. So that way I improve to help you improve. So you help me improve and you get the picture. We're constantly going to improve in that cycle. So, and I think hopefully if you've been in the district a couple of years with me here, you see that that's happening um, and hopefully that continues. Now, I know what you're thinking. You were looking at that data before. You're like, oh, can we make that jump to beat the state in just three years? I would want you to think about that there's compounding effects on some of the supports that we're bringing. So this represents down here, the baseline test that we took last year. So this was last school year. And now starting this school year, we started with a brand new curriculum map. And even if you're in that high school, you had a more supportive curriculum map that's gonna help your instruction. Six through eight really got a good overhaul for their new curriculum map. This represent um, down here, increased training, support, collaboration, accountability, accountability for me. Hopefully you've noticed in my professional developments, I'm trying to support you guys in every way that I can. And in the between time, I'm out at the schools helping you provide whatever it is that you need. This marks today, we're introducing our three-year growth goals. These are at schools 
at each school individually. So each school is looking at their own data, thinking about their own students, their own environment. What is it that we need to focus on that has the highest leverage? And so I think that's going to bring a ton of help as that goes throughout. And then next year, we get that new resource that I talked about, and that continues to help. So you see how every time we keep adding a support and something into this, we increase the amount of supports leading into our third year test where we're going to beat the state. And this is just a snapshot of some of the things. There's so much more that we're doing for you guys and with you guys. I've been talking for a while. So why don't you take the moment um, now and I want your department chair, admin, um, or your team, um, take five to seven minutes, pause this video. I'm not going to sit here and stare for five minutes. Pause this video, take a look at your own data that I've provided. Where is it that you were at last year? And where is it that your, your goal, the data numbers are that you want to move to? Take a moment, pause this video, have that group discussion. Awesome job. Well, welcome back. I hope that was a productive conversation. Um, and hopefully those goals, those numbers that you guys are talking about are definitely reachable. We don't want you to be successful um, and not feel overwhelmed. So how is this going to be executed? Um, we're going to talk here in just a second about your specific growth plan. You talked about here's the numbers we want to reach. Now we want to bring in a conversation about how we're going to get there. So each school has these one to two clear goals each year. This is what we're focused on because this will move the needle on our students the most. Um, and you got to think about this is a three year goal. And so as we focus on our ninth grade students, then they become 10th grade students, then they become 11th grade students. We've had three years of focusing on making sure that they're improving and that's going to have a compounding effect as well. I mentioned leading measures. We're not just relying on waiting for the test to see how well we're doing. We have things in our um, weekly, daily systems that measure the progress students are making towards our goal. If you want a really awesome um, look at how you could be doing this, Modern Classroom is a great example. We have teachers over at East and Lincoln High School doing Modern Classroom this year, and it has data tracking built into it. It's student pace. It's awesome. That might be a way that you can get a mastery based measurement um, going for your students. Having scoreboards, part of that modern classroom is displaying either physically or digitally, here's where you're at in reaching your goals. How can you include your students and motivate them to reach these goals that you set for them? Um, scoreboards are a great way to do that. And lastly is accountability. This is going out, everybody knows. I'm posting this outside my, my office, um, big poster. Um, I want this shared with everybody. Everybody's going to know KCPS Science is going for this goal. And so you can't hide in the background and say, I'm not part of this. Everyone's going to be looking and saying, what is it that you're doing at your school with your students to reach this goal? And we should be able to have the data and the, the information to say, here's what we're doing. Here's our progress. Here's where you can help. Uh, we're going to recruit people that way. All right. Again, I think I've been talking for a little bit too long. So now we actually get to the part where you guys can listen to um, your your team leaders present to you their game plan, provide any feedback, make adjustments, tweak it. And then by the end of this 10 minutes, and I'm not going to play the 10 minute video here, but you guys can mark off like here is our goal, our action plan to improve at our school. So take the next 10 minutes, um, department heads. Um, and really present, here's what we're thinking the focus should be on for this year in order to make increased results. And remember, this is not just for the biology students, not just for the eighth grade students. This is all science classroom. So take a moment. What is that game plan? All right. And I am going to be collecting those not as a way to evaluate everybody, but just so when I go and support schools, I can look, I say, ah, the sale. This is what they're focused on. So when I come into support, I want to make sure that I'm doing it within that goal and not trying to provide additional things that don't align to it. So I'll have a way to get all that data collected from the department chairs um, and that finalized form. And let's skip past that video. There we go. You're not doing this alone. Okay. Uh, you have support. You have me, your science coordinator. I help with curriculum assessments, coaching, supplies, any other random old thing, that's what I'm here for. Most of our schools have instructional coaches, and if you don't have one right now, you're not going to have one 
not for three years. So you'll have an instructional coach at some point. They provide you coaching, observation, and feedback on your instruction, PLC support, giving you strategies um, that you can try. So our coach is super awesome. Your department chair, they're there for PLC support, setting department goals, teaching support, department leadership. Go to your department chair. And if they can't specifically help you, they know the people who can. Um, and lastly, and disclaimer, I never watched The Simpsons. So I don't know putting their principal um, there is offensive to anybody. I don't know. Um, not trying to say anything of anybody. But you also have your administration and they're all on board. They want to provide us the resources. They want to help with your school goals. They can also provide observation and feedback um, and lead your school in the same direction. So that way um, we're kind of all on board. So not in this alone. Uh, one of the things that you noticed on that thought catcher, if you had that, was I provided a spot to put down anything that is a barrier to your students reaching their goal that is outside of your control. This is not a new image. As you can see, this is from Kobe from 1992. Sphere of control, things that I can affect. That's what I want you to focus on. But then you also have these sphere of influence and sphere of concern. It does impact you. It is a real thing. I'm not discarding it. But oftentimes, it's not something that you can make a change on. So I don't want you to focus on those things. But I did want to provide you an outlet I mean, you can scan this QR code and they'll give you a space where you can submit some of the things that you've been thinking about that are impacting your student success, but you don't have any control over that thing. Um, to give you one example, because I know I'll get this a lot, but the buses, that is outside of your control, but it does impact, say, your student's attendance, which is impacting your grades. So that would be an example of something that you could put down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to collect all these I'm going to create, um, I think there's called a word map, where it puts them all, the ones that are um, put, submitted the most get larger. And I'm going to have that as a visual outside my office so that people can come by and be, they can see all the things that are affecting us that we can't control. And then they're going to say, but in my job, I can control that. And so then we're going to increase our team of people who are helping us. Um, some of these might fall on my lap. And so now I can help sort out that problem, or I know who can sort out that problem. So this is just going to help us identify some of these things affecting your students and hopefully start to tackle them. Finally, last slide, our exit ticket. Um, I will send out via email a feedback form, pretty standard from the CID, CIPD department. Um, I'll only in the live one, I'm going to post in the chat. This is just a video. Um, and your other exit ticket item is to tell at least one other person about your KCPS goal or your school's goal or both. I'm going to include in my email out to the teams um, a the poster that I made for this. Um, so if you're Paseo, hopefully you're not viewing this before Friday, but don't push this out before Friday. You're going to spoil it for the rest of the people. Um, but you can tell at least, at least, you can tell more, but at least one other person about what we're doing, what our goal is, and how we're going to get there. So thank you guys so much. Um, I'm really looking forward to these next three years, supporting you guys, reaching this goal, seeing the improvements that we make, um, and all that. Please, please, please provide feedback. So that way, there we go. I can come and support you in a better and more focused way. And I'll be seeing you guys around. Don't hesitate to email me. Adios. Thank <laughs> you.